A few weeks ago, I made my predictions about the Formula One season. They were my pre-testing predictions. And in this video, we're gonna talk about what we saw in testing and where I think the pecking order is gonna be from what I've seen. Now, before, in that previous video, I started off with the teams and I started from bottom to top. So we're gonna do that again today. At the bottom of the pyramid, I'm gonna put Haas. I think, I think they're actually gonna surprise us with how competitive they are, but I do think that when push comes to shove, I think they're just gonna be that one step further behind than Stake, Sauber, whatever you want to call them, and those teams above, like Racing Bulls, Williams, Alpine. I think at the bottom, I think it's gonna be a lot tighter than we expect, but I do think that Haas are gonna come out on the bottom. Hopefully this season, Komatsu and the engineers at Haas are going to be able to really put something together and bring some upgrades to the car that actually work. Obviously last year, they spent a large chunk of their wind tunnel time, their finances on building that big upgrade package for Austin and it just didn't work. It didn't do what they wanted it to do and Testing has finished. The Formula One season is here. If you're enjoying all my Formula One content, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and subscribe in this top corner if you're not going down below. And I'll catch you at the end of the video. I'm really impressed with how they dealt with testing. I believe they completed the most laps and they were brutally honest in the fact that the whole point of testing for them was to understand the tyres. Now, hopefully, I believe they completed over 400 laps. So, Hopefully, they've got to grips with the tyres. They understand what they need to change on the car to benefit the tyres and benefit themselves in race and quality trim. And hopefully, Kevin Magnussen and Nico Hulkenberg can pull out a few shock results. I do think that they're going to have an okay season in their standards. So, I do think they're going to finish at the bottom. But I do think as the season progresses, I do think they're going to build up. Now, in the next place, I think 10th, 9th and 8th are going to be all supremely close this season i think it's going to be a case of which drivers can overperform on one occasion the most sort of thing so in ninth place i've got stake f1 team sauber whatever you want to call them and i think bottas and guan Yuzhou are both going to have good seasons with the machinery they have under them but i think they're just going to be outside of the battle for points. I think they're going to have the opportunity to win more points than Haas, but I don't think that they're going to be a much better team or in a much better situation. I think they're both going to find themselves struggling through the season. Hopefully, we can see a few Q3 appearances and hopefully some points finishes for all the teams this season. Next up, now, I'm not 100% sure about this one because I think there's a few teams that are going to be quite close here. I think Alpine, though, are going to be closer to the bottom than they are to the next ones up. So in eighth place, I'm putting Alpine with Esteban Ocon and Pierre Gasly. It's a bit of a weird situation with Alpine. They had a five-year plan when they returned to the sport. Obviously, Renault returned to the sport, Alpine sub-company. Um... They had that plan, five-year plan to win championships, win races, and they're not quite living up to expectation. Obviously, last year, they got two podiums. They're claiming it's all to do with their engine. It's not up to standard, really. They're wanting this engine equalization. Now, engines are frozen at the moment. So, realistically, if you're down, that's your own fault. Everyone knew what was coming. In my opinion, I don't agree with this engine freeze. I think there should still be opportunities to improve your engine. But obviously, heading for the 2026 season, those regs are completely changing anyway. So it's going to be interesting to see what the excuses are this season. But I can't see Alpine pulling out many shocks. I think if they're lucky, they might get a few top five finishers. But... I think it's going to be a disappointing season for them in both qualifying and race trim. Now, next up, I believe we're into seventh place now. I'm going to put Williams. Now, understandably, racing balls have taken a big step this offseason. We know the deal with them having a closer collaboration with Red Bull. Now, is that legal? Rumoured to be there within all the guidelines, but... Who knows? Who knows? Obviously owned by the same company, Racing Bulls and Red Bull, so difficult situation. But I think um, James Vowles has a brilliant plan for this Williams team. 
He's essentially writing off 24 and 25 with complete aim of getting back to the front for 26, 27 and so on. Now, obviously, they've only recently come into this sort of era, in my opinion. They've changed a lot of the behind the scenes. They're building facilities, which is massively important. And they've put the dash on the steering wheel like every other team. So it's about time that I think Williams are going to have made a step forward. But I just think other teams are going to just be that little bit further ahead. And hopefully they can see that forward trajectory into the year of 2026. Obviously, they've got a big situation on their hands with a potential Alex Albon move. The potential of bringing in Kimi Antoinelli. Is Logan Sargent going to be good enough this season? Because I think the big problem that Williams are going to have in that battle for the teams higher up is I don't think Logan's going to be in the fight, really. I'm hoping he can be a shock this season. But I think the big problem is going to be I don't think he's going to be close enough to Alex and I think that is going to cause bigger problems when it comes to the Constructors battle. Now, next up, we're going to talk about Racing Bulls. I think they're going to be in fifth place. Fifth? Sixth place. Yeah, I think they're going to be in sixth place. Now, they've made a massive step and they've got two very experienced drivers in Yuki Tsunoda and Daniel Ricciardo. Now, I'm not quite sure how much of a step they've taken. In testing, they looked really good. Their race runs looked good. And I think we're in that stagnant period for them of, are they going to be in with McLaren, Mercedes, Ferrari? Or are they going to be with Aston? Or are they going to just be that little bit further behind with Williams? Now, for me, I think they're going to be closer to Mercedes, McLaren, Ferrari than anybody thinks. I think Daniel Ricciardo is a massively impressive driver when he's on form. I think Yuki Tsunoda has some really impressive performances too. So I think they're going to find themselves in sixth place. I think the big problem is going to be that I think Aston Martin, I think Fernando Alonso is going to pip a few good results. I've got them in fifth ahead of racing balls because I think if Alonso gets that right car underneath him, I think he's going to cause problems for those drivers above. And that is what's going to win the battle between Racing Bulls and Aston Martin. That's where I think the battle is going to be this season. Then you've got three teams. Obviously, there's four teams left. There's three teams in this next bit, which I think are going to be in a really, really close battle. I think McLaren are going to start on the back foot and Mercedes too. But I think it's going to be McLaren in P4. I think... Their biggest issue is going to be the inexperience of Oscar Piastri and I think Lando Norris is going to have a few dodgy races. But I think by the end of the season, it's going to be McLaren in P4. I think it's going to be Mercedes in P3. Now, I think it's going to become at Mercedes. I think it's going to become a bit of a, a power problem. Obviously, you've got seven-time, eight-time world champion Lewis Hamilton in the car but he's leaving for Ferrari at the end of the season at what point is it going to be a case of everything switches to George that's going to happen this season because it's got to happen you can't just not do it because it's going to happen so it's going to be interesting to see what happens in that dynamic and then you've got a similar situation at Ferrari at what point is Charles Leclerc going to take the lead and Ferrari really shut down Carlos Sainz. Now, obviously, the teams are going to be professional about it and it probably won't get discussed in the public, but I think there'll be a few things that happen race day, quality day, that you'll know, right, they're turning more to the driver that's staying. And I think that's important. And I think that's important to know for the driver's standings too for both Carlos and Lewis Hamilton. So, obviously... It's a no-brainer who I think is going to win the title. It's obviously going to be Red Bull. I just think they're a step above the rest. And the rumours of zero degradation, obviously that's a lie. It's physically impossible for these cars to have no degradation. But I do think that they're just going to fly away. It wouldn't surprise me if after the race on Saturday, I get home from the football, I check my phone and Max Verstappen has worn by 30 seconds. Unless there's reliability issues or it has a crash, I can't see anybody winning other than Red Bull. So that is my predictions. Let me know yours down in the comments. 
I think everybody's going to put Red Bull in first. But who's going to win out of Ferrari, Mercedes and McLaren? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure you hit that subscribe button while you're down there. And I'll catch you in my next video. Make sure to go and find me on TikTok, pictured here. And Twitter, pictured here. These are the places where I'll keep you all up to date with all my upcoming videos and my thoughts and feelings around the Formula 1 and football weekend.